All this imbalanced vibrations tribe, I trust everyone is well across the cosmos. You know, I hope you're having a great time on Earth. Uh, today I'm jumping in here really briefly to bring a bit of clarity to what we're doing, especially in relation to Sovereignty 2020 and why we're doing that. And this is just a, a very brief way of explaining this rhetorical question that I get all the time about whether I think that something is going to happen in 2020. And my response to that is actually I know something is going to happen in 2020. And, and what I've done in that knowing is, is launch not only Sovereignty Mentorship, which is going on right now, but also Ambassador Training and many other things that we've put together, such as the Mindful app, in order for us to begin to create our own ecosystem as conscious people, because we have more than enough to continuously power our own nation. However, if we continuously jump in the boat with uh, the people that I'm going to be bringing up right now, then we may find ourselves uh, sunk and bamboozled and swindled and all the rest of what goes on when you're not paying attention, you're not being mindful about your engagements and your experience overall on this planet. So the first thing that I want to get home, drive home here, because I think this is something that even a blind man can see, is just to remember that the platform, which this video will even go across uh, in certain cases, which is Facebook, and I think Instagram and Facebook now have a very close affiliation if they're not owned by the same person or company or whoever it is back there, alien, whatever, is just to realize that this Facebook logo is actually a representation of Tubal Cain, which is the symbol or seal from the Queen of England uh, of a spy because it was the first Tubal Cain, also known as 007, that was actually spying for the Queen actually in the spiritual world. Amazingly enough that Tubal Cain or John Dee was enlisted by the Queen to actually decipher the language of angelics to see if there could be a form of communication made between then that empire and some of the entities that exist outside of time. Now mind you, that may be way too far for most people to actually be able to grasp, so we're going to back that down and just let you see exactly what's going on. So Mark Zuckerberg was given his first $500,000 to start Facebook by Peter Thiel. Now remember, Zuckerberg supposedly stole this idea from the Winklevoss twins. So this means that Peter Thiel, who is actually very aware of many things, also in a part of the governments, and this, I even believe personally in the CIA, the military, etc. So he would have had to know maybe this wasn't even uh, Mark's idea. But maybe all of that is just a story that's being given to you to kind of put together something uh, that sounds like, hey, this just started uh, the same way everything else starts. So we know that, again, that Peter Till gave uh, Mark this first $500,000. Now, we need to investigate a little bit of what's going on with Peter Thiel, which I've done very thoroughly. I actually have a video on some of this, and there's others in the past who, who've bought some things up, but I don't feel like that it's ever comprehensive enough to explain to people enough to get the picture about what we're dealing with here, because Peter Thiel and his great friend Elon Musk also started PayPal. And let me just put that up here for you. Peter Thiel, Elon Musk, PayPal, and... For some of the young bucks, they don't remember, but Zero uh, was another company, okay? So we have the Zero founder, Peter Thiel. I'm just giving you some references here. I'm not going to do a deep dive on this. Peter Thiel and Elon Musk Innovation. And Peter Thiel, you can see here, co-founder of PayPal, along with Elon Musk, who you know, okay? So I think that, honestly, Elon Musk exists at times to, to actually shield people's awareness that Peter Thiel is actually back there also. Peter Thiel is also a chess champion. Let me just take you here really briefly so you can understand that he's not a dummy. He's actually ranked in the world uh, for his chess championships, okay? So it's all a game to Peter, okay? So he talks about he's a fied world chess champion, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just giving you the background. You can actually go and check this stuff out yourself. This is not like some of the deeper metaphysics that we offer where you have to depend on the gnosis. This is something you can depend on the Google or Gog Magog. So... The next thing is, is since you've established a relationship between Peter Thiel, PayPal, and Elon Musk, you now must realize that Peter Thiel also gave Vitalik Buterin the first $100,000 to start Ethereum. And if you remember, Ethereum was actually on um, Kickstarter, and that's how many people actually became rich, because they actually bought this currency off of Kickstarter when Kickstarter was still allowing people to actually post cryptocurrencies, which stopped very fast. But I just want you to remember that Peter Thiel was basically instrumental in even beginning cryptocurrency. And many in the know are aware that BTC is actually not um, something owned or put together by someone who is non-existent, i.e. Satoshi. But Satoshi is actually a code word for uh, information and intelligence agency. I'll just keep it like that. 
So the next level of Peter Till's engagement, she would have to realize, is the development of Palantir. Palantir is a weapons-grade AI system. It's what's called strong AI. It's bought online. Do uh, it's bought online in what we call chaos events. These are events that people are acting real, meaning generally uh, mass shootings and those kind of things. Military battlefields. You bring strong AI in, and strong AI analyzes the entire situation begin and begins to form opinions based on what it's witnessing. Generally Generally, it's called strong AI because it must be bought in a chaos, bought on board in a chaos event. And what that means is, is that because everybody in a dangerous situation is actually acting real, not acting fake and trying to do their makeup, but, you know, screaming, running, crying and, and, and defending themselves, whatever they can do in those real actions, then at that point, when AI is picking up that information and learning from that, it is picking up information of how we really react in a real situation. Palantir Systems was also plugged into the Army. The Army actually sued Palantir for plugging in this system, and the story goes that basically Palantir uh, operatives came into the Army and offered them an opportunity to enjoy this system, and uh, they kind of did that with some lower levels. Maybe they gave them some uh, trips to the Bahamas or whatever to put it in as a test, and needless to say that this system was actually installed in the Army's computer, which the Army has their own closed-loop AI, and what happened was is that this Palantir system before it was removed and the army sued Palantir, it had expunged, and let me turn this off, it had expunged all the data from the army's AI system, which you can imagine how much data was actually there. Remember, this game is all about data. So Facebook's got the data, you know, uh, cryptocurrency is on the backbone of actually being able to control the data, as you'll see here in just a moment. And then most importantly, we have a system that is artificially intelligent that actually compiles data Data and actually brings references and and even predicts the future. That's what this ultimately gets into. That that a Palantir system, you can ask it questions like how to reduce crime in an area by 20% or how to get the drop on an enemy. And then Palantir will assess all the information that it has, all the things that it's connected to, the systems, the computers, the phones, Facebook, everything, and then spit out some answers about what is the direct way to actually go about achieving that. So rather than trying to predict the future, what it does is actually give you the formulas to create the future that you want or the probable future that you're looking for. Now, the interesting thing is, remember, you had Elon Musk, who also is the developer of Neuralink, which is uh, basically um, a biological lace which interweaves with the brain in order to basically jack you into AI. And Elon Musk's running story on Neuralink was that he developed Neuralink because of this fear in the future of AI getting out of control and then trying to take over humanity. But he didn't let you know that his best friend was actually developing that system. It's almost like a problem reacts and solution with these two. Uh, so as I looked over Neuralink, which I did years ago, especially in development of some of the technologies that I was working with and understood that they were not only deep into the robotics and the metamaterials, but I also realized that Elon Musk and Peter Thiel were obviously staging themselves to be the Skynet in the Terminator movie if they choose to make different decisions about this technology that they have access to and that they're developing. Okay, so just remember, Elon Musk actually two days ago raised 51 more million dollars to actually start Neuralink. So this means that these guys like Dr. Xavier already have a device that, again, they're already hiring. They hire people for this has been up for at least three years. They already and this first of all, the jobs here are so prestigious when you take it and they hire you, they actually move you out of your country and bring you onto the facility and they give you all the things that you need. And they're looking for very creative people that think outside the box. You can reach read all this yourself. But needless to say, Elon Musk is going forward with this. And but we know how this all works. By the time you get this report, it means that it's already developed. And it's being made available to not only the developers, but also people who are interested in it financially and that can actually afford the system. What is the system? It is to allow you to be able to, like in the matrix, load up anything that you want to know right inside of your mind. It's not a phone like a Google. It goes on inside of your own consciousness. And that was the development of the Neuralink technology. Okay. And once again, we have Palantir here, the strong AI now connected with Peter Thiel's you know, or an Elon Musk Neuralink system. So they in themselves have achieved the state of gods, right? All seeing, all knowing, having access to everybody's data, knowing more about you than you even know yourself. Since if I ask you, what did you do last Thursday? You may be like, point. So anyway, the next thing is here to realize that Palantir is constantly 
operating. And many people are complaining about this operation. And here's a recent article. It's actually put out just a few days ago, but it says tech workers protest data mining firm Palantir for role in immigrant arrest. And what this means is, is that somebody actually queried Palantir's system to find out how many illegal aliens and their exact identity were in the United States and then got that data and then started arresting people based on that data. So that may have been ICE. That may have been any other government organization that is aligned with these immigration uh, um, policies that they're putting forth. But again, you know, while you're looking at maybe the Hispanics who actually just used to own the entire country, used to belong to them, uh, that them being hounded and, and, and removed from the country, we need to start thinking about if, if walls are built to keep us in uh, instead of actually uh, letting people out, right? Um, so this is a deep thing. You got to remember that this is happening right now. Why I say most people are arguing with their loved ones and bickering and fighting over small emotional pettiness. Right behind you, the entire reality is, is basically being reconstructed and about to be pulled from underneath everybody's feet. And the biggest thing is to keep everyone just distracted, fighting, not even preparing for this, figuring out what their sports teams are going to do next. And, you know, all of that silliness and missing that, A, this is actually 2020. This is like a movie from the future. This is the time that you need to be getting yourself together or you'll be, a, you'll be counted amongst the losers. I'm like, I guess the Quran says. So anyway, now let's just take a really brief look at Founders Fund because this gets... Uh, way more interesting as you go. Let's see if I can shrink this here. No, I cannot. And what this is about is that actually Founders Fund owns quite a bit of stuff and has invested interest in quite a few things that you use every single day. So we have Airbnb here. I'm just going to name off the popular ones. We have SpaceX here. So they're already going to the moon. We have Stripe, which is the com the companion to PayPal. So PayPal and Stripe are basically the number one payment platforms that are on the, up, on the side of fiat. Uh, so that means literally that that is a monopoly. So here it is. We got Facebook. We got Spotify. You love listening to your tunes. Now, remember, all this is data collection. This is not about just offering a service. It's about a service that everybody wants to use. Uh, being created so that the data can be expunged from everyone. And you can look over all these other corporations, rig up and affirm that I don't necessarily know about, uh, but I'm sure are deeply involved into stuff like, look, stem centrics. That probably has something to do with stem cells or at least stem technology. Uh, we have Lyft here, another big one. We have... Mm, Oculus, okay? So Palmer Lucky, if you remember, Palmer Lucky actually sold Oculus. Right? He sold Oculus and actually is starting off, let me just put it right here, in creating his own military weapons grade craziness. Let's see how that, how that digs up. Palmer Lucky Firm wins Pentagon drone AI contract. Okay, this just happened in March. This is what I'm saying, man. Wake up. So now Palmer Lucky, who used to just be developing Oculus games, that's what I'm saying. This, these people are, are just stories. They're front, front men, front women to uh, creating a story that makes it believable for you. But the truth is all the devices and things that are being c connected are to push forward in the, into this ultra technological prison box. OK, so now Palmer Lucky's firm wins this Pentagon drone AI contact contract just a few months ago. And let's go back here again. So the Founders Fund has acquired now Oculus, something called Ritual. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see what else is here. I guess it's going to just start thinning it out as we get to the bottom as far as there's deep mind, uh, as far as things that we readily recognize as uh, services that we use every day. Asana. I'm not sure why this got so far down here, but this is pretty much everybody's data because lots of people love Asana. In fact, we, I thought this was actually more of like a d development from people who were a little bit more on the conscious side. Uh, however, it looks like that they may have been bought out too. Okay. So, Remember, again, that Peter Thiel is a chess champion, so he knows exactly how to play this game. 64 bits or 8 by 8, this is the way of changes. This is I Ching, and, uh, and it's getting crunk up. So that's all I have for today in relation to just raw data, so that way I don't make this a maxi. And I'm just working to get everyone aware that 2020 does mean something. 
I find that there's a lot of stuff going on around the conscious community and it's just not focused. So we're doing our best to actually get at least our tribe focused in on this. We're asking people who are really concerned about their overall wellness and the wellness of their family to not only just either jump in and listen to some of this information that we've been posting freely, but if you want to take a deeper dive, then get involved in Sovereignty Mentorship, which we have running now under Ambassador Training. You can sign up with that under Secret Energy and actually get educated and get in with the tribe and unlock your uniqueness so that that way you have your own way of fueling yourself after this point where it's clear that the financial institutions will be making a turn towards whatever it is that they want to make a turn towards and then they will try to force everyone else to go in that direction. Last but not least, Facebook is actually now going to be starting their own cryptocurrency and this is of course to gain all of the information behind uh, the, the data the financial data, just like Apple is starting their own currency or they have the Apple card, now what we find here is that Facebook has started what we call Project Libra um, and they're already being questioned by the Senate. They're seeking information on Facebook's Libra crypto project. So again, this is the company uh, that actually, re that actually, um, Excuse me, I want to say this is the company that refuses to allow other cryptocurrencies to market or advertise across its platform, yet it is developing its own cryptocurrency. So this is the world that you're living in. This is all the same club. I'm sure most of these people, if not already, are involved, are going to be in the future in intelligence or central, centralized intelligence. And that all your information and everything that you do and what you're about is not only going to be public, but it's all about predicting what large masses of people are going to do, not necessarily just you. So if you feel like you're just that person sitting at the house, you're not doing anything, you have nothing to worry about, that's not really the concern here. The concern here is a global map of everyone and their actions and their engagements and their interactions and then plotting out a future for all of us that we necessarily don't have much say so in because this machine and all the other things that they're aligned with is telling them where uh, they feel it feels like things should go. And so in conclusion, as a real human being, uh, even as the, uh, the Constitution says in itself that, you know, this kind of predatory uh, uh, way of treating citizens give them the right to actually move on, give them the right to actually to, to defend themselves. And that's just what it actually says. You know, now, now I'm sure that, of course, was applied for only a small specific group of people, but it does say everyone. So this is the main thing that I really wanted to bring forward today is just to be on point. Don't be wasting your time arguing with folks, fighting, you know, backbiting, gossiping like it's a WWF match, you know, trying to figure out, you know, who's on top and who's the winner and who's going to shoot the most three points when <laughs> in just a little bit, you'll be concerned about your family. You'll be more concerned about your own well-being, whether you're going to be eating today and, and that kind of stuff if you're not on point with your time and how you're spending it. So this is, again, one of those real, real conversations. I trust that people will take this knowledge and grow from it. And I'll be speaking with everyone soon. Hope to catch you in Sovereignty Mentorship.